from the audience about a problem that they had trouble with, and we'll do that one. Number three. Number three, 1.3. Okay. And 1.3, it says a volume, a solution of volume 50 cubic centimeters contains two times 10 to the minus three molar iron three plus and one times 10 to the minus three molar tin four and one molar hydrochloric acid. Uh, basically, it's asking you've got a rotating disk electrode, has mass transfer coefficients. Calculate the limiting current for the reduction of iron three under these conditions. Okay. All right, so number A basically is using the equation that we've already derived. And um, so the limiting current for iron three plus basically would be the reductive current. So it would be the cathodic branch of that system. Now in this case, we can use the de derived limiting current form for a single species present in solution. So we, remember we der derived the current potential curves for in our semi empirical treatment for a single species present in solution, oxidized species present in solution. Uh, we don't have iron two present initially in solution, so we can use the simplest form of that equation. Um, and so that's equal to, um, uh, as I remember, it's uh, M sub zero NFA C zero star, right? So all we have to do is then put in our, um, all the relevant parameters. What's the mass transfer coefficient? Uh, 10 to the minus two. 10 to the minus two. Um, centimeters per second, right? Mm -hmm. Iron three plus is going to iron two plus, so N is equal to one in that system. F is 96,485, I, that's how I always remember it. So that's Coulombs, basically per mole of electrons. And um, A is given, right? 0.3 centimeters squared. 0.3 centimeters squared. Well, you might have some trouble now is if you do the units, you'll see that we've got units of cubic centimeters um, in the system. And so what we actually need to do is put in for bulk concentration, not the molar concentration, but the concentration in moles per cubic centimeter, okay? Rather than moles per liter, we need moles per cubic centimeter. So that's kind of the tricky thing about the bulk concentration, especially in these electrochemical problems. So C sub zero star is the concentration of iron uh, three plus, which was um, two times 10 to the minus three moles per liter. But if you do the math, you'll see that it's two times 10 to the minus three moles, two times 10 to the six moles per uh, cubic centimeter. There's a factor of um, 10 to the third in that system. Part B of the problem. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, okay, so that, that would be the thing. Actually, the answer then is uh, 5.79 times 10 to the minus four amps. And then you can do the 10 the same way. Part B is uh, current potential scan from minus, plus 1.3 to minus 0 0.4 under the above conditions. Make a label, quantitative, quick, correct, sketch. Okay. So basically it's asking you to take the given uh, concentrations and potentials that you'll have to get from the um, back of the book. And assuming they've got mass transfer controlled reactions and Nernstein reactions, make a, a label correct thing. So what we'll have is a, is a sketch something like this, where here is E. Again, we're going more negative in this particular direction. And we start out, I guess we're probably let me start over again. Most of our interest is over here on this side of the graph. So E again is negative. I cathodic is always up in this book. 
not always in the literature, but in this book it is. Well, if we can write, I won't be able to draw it exactly right, but first of all, we can think about perhaps having a little bit of a curve here for oxygen. That doesn't really say anything about it, but that would be oxygen oxidation, oxygen production, I should say, by water oxidation. Then if we go to about uh, 0.77 volts, we'll see a curve like so. And that will be, and that's going to be the iron 3 plus, 2 plus couple. All right. And the important thing to think about there is that the half wave potential will be the E0. And that's true because of the, it's a Nernstian equation, it's a reversible equation. So in that case, the E1 half is equal to E0. And that's a 0.58 milliamp. Then for the tin, the E0 is point, plus 0.15. And it turns out that the wave is a little bit higher, 1.2 milliamp. for the 10 4, SN4 plus to uh, SN3 plus. And then almost immediately we'd get some uh, reduction of protons in that system. So, but that would be about right for the, uh, the sketch. So we've used the, uh, the semi-empirical current voltage curve formula for an Ernstian process with, one, with uh, only the oxidant present initially or the oxidized species present initially uh, and we get the limiting currents for both processes. Notice they're cumulative. The limiting current for the tin 4 plus is on top of the limiting current for the tin for the iron 3 plus. Now those curves would look different if we had both iron 3 and iron 2 in solution or if we had tin 3 and tin 4 in solution. Okay. So we can use the the equation that you use in problem A. Mm -hmm. um, right, that, if you'll notice, this current here is 0 0.58 milliamps, and that's the current we would sketch on the graph. Okay. My, what? Qu my question is, um, um, if we can use the equation um, 1.416 of the book and mm -hmm. find the limiting current of iron and the limiting current of tin and use that equation to make the sketch of I versus E. Um, yeah, you could actually plot it based on that, uh, that equation uh, to get an exact plot. Okay. Uh, in this case, the question basically said sketch a plot. So it, I, usually when they say sketch, they don't say do an exact plot. But yeah, you can actually put that into a program. And actually, you can't, it's hard to do it because you have to do it kind of in a, you have to solve it uh, numerically. Hmm? 1.416. And that plot would give you the proper shape of the curve, particularly for the iron 3 plus. Species. The only for the tin, then you would, if you wanted to use that, you would have to take that same current and just add it directly on top of the, what you've already had for the limiting current for the iron three plus. So you could use that curve, but you'd basically have to add those two plots together. Okay. okay? Right. You can do that. The, the, I guess the main thing I would think about in a sketch is having the e one half at the right position and the right limiting current. In basically the shape, you know, you know, I, but an exact plot is not necessary when I say sketch. What is the current in the second case for the? 1.2 milliamps. What is the current? They have nearly everything the same. Like the only difference is that with two electrons. The limiting current for the team is the same as the limiting current for the for the iron. No. Maybe. They differ in the concentration, but the uh, like one is double the concentration. Iron is three is double the concentration. Ten two, ten four, 
but tempor has two electrons. Oh yeah, oh. I, you're right. I've messed that up. So yeah, in that case, that'd be the same. Reversing the scan at what point? Here? Well, this is a little bit hard to say because in this particular case, it, since it's a rotating disk electrode, we would expect to retrace exactly the initial, the curve out and back. Uh, because it's at what they call steady state, the current is not dependent on time. So, and it also really doesn't depend on the, pre in principle, it doesn't depend exactly on the previous state of the system because uh, we can, if we scan sufficiently slowly, it didn't really matter if we arrived here at this point from starting here or if we came back from some other point. So these are steady state curves and they would have the exact same shape going forward or backwards. Uh, as you know, and other people will find out, that's not normally true. Uh, normally, we don't have what they call steady state curves, and the shape of the curve on the forward and the reverse sweep would be quite different. Um, but in this particular case, they would be the same. So you have a straight line between the two? No, if we swept out, we'd get this shape, and then if we swept back, we'd basically retrace the, the curves. Right. It starts going down. Sure. Okay. Uh, the different only thing is that it once you it does depend on potential in actuality because if we get out here we're going we're starting to reduce hydrogen ions or making hydrogen gas that stirs up the solution. Not such a critical deal, but it also changes the pH of the solution, which will affect the potentials of the tin and the iron. And so uh, depending on how fast you sweep back, you'll see those effects as well. Depending on how much the solution is buffered, you'll see those effects as well. So in practice, doing this sweeping out and back, you won't see an exact uh, duplication of the shape of the wave on the forward and the reverse sweep, but be pretty close. Okay. Well, we've got some time, probably time for one more question. Is there anyone that? Question number one. Mm-hmm. How do you determine the, the, the potential of the electrode is like the, the potential at which the current is zero, or the equilibrium uh, potential? So in one, you're, you, I don't know if that's what's asking you, but is that what you want to know? Yeah. For, for, for instance, for number A, yeah. or just like, we've got a group of uh, like possibility for the reduction and for the oxidation. Mm -hmm. According to the book, it, it doesn't show us how how we determine the level of the potential mm -hmm. of the platinum or the mercury electrode at which there, there is zero current. Yeah. Well, there's in this particular case, it's it's not directly apparent. But if you if you examine it, you can ask yourself. If I'm at a certain potentials, I will have a non-zero current flow. For example, if I'm at sufficiently negative potentials, I will have copper reduction from copper 2 plus to copper metal. Is that right? Likewise, if I will have a cadmium reduction to cadmium metal. So there is a potential which has to be more positive than the reduction potential for copper and cadmium to avoid that possibility. Likewise, in this case, it's a platinum electrode, so we have to be more positive than the hydrogen ion reduction potential as well. Right? So, you can write down all of the particular uh, for 1.1a, you can write down all the equations, the chemical equations for electrochemical processes that can occur. For example, uh, copper 2 plus, plus two electrons goes to copper metal, uh, and that's a, 
0.34 volts. Um, cadmium 2 plus, plus 2 electrons going to cadmium metal. Uh, is minus 0.403. Hydrogen ion plus um, electron going to hydrogen gas, zero volts. Um, are the basic the basic uh, ideas. <clears throat> there are a number of other possibilities. For example, we can think about the reduction of water. That would be um, water reduction going to hydrogen gas plus hydroxide ions. And that occurs at about minus 0 0.8 volts. We also have uh, the possibility of oxygen production or oxygen, um, the reduction of oxygen, but that would be uh, given basically by the following equation where we oxidize water to form oxygen. That E0 is about 1.23. Actually, there is a uh, platinum oxidation potential. Okay, also at about probably 1.2 volts. So the question is where would we be? We have to be at a place where there's zero current, okay? We can't be any more negative than uh, 0.34 volts because at that point we would be reducing copper ion to copper metal. And that takes into account, then we don't have to worry about cadmium or hydrogen because both of those are already more negative than that. So as long as we're more positive than 0.34 volts, we're okay. And for on the other side of the area, you would have to be at least as negative or at least as positive as 1.2 volts in order before we'd see, so for example, platinum being oxidized to platinum ion or water being oxidized to oxygen gas. So the electrode would be somewhere between 0.34 volts and 1.2 volts. In any of that range of potentials will have zero current, and that would be a potential where we could possibly have the electrode at a potential. So that would be the, basically the equilibrium potential for that system. Now if we go negative from the equilibrium potential, the first reaction would be copper reduction, and we go positive, the first reaction would be water ox or platinum oxidation or water oxidation, one or the other. Both platinum oxidation and water oxidation are not a very kinetically rapid process, so it's hard to suggest which one would be first. Uh, it would depend on the particular system. Probably platinum oxidation, though. All right, so you could use these that are on the back cover of the book. Yeah, yeah. The equilibrium right. Now, remember, those are just equilibrium potentials, I don't actually have any kinetic information about it, so. Um. Uh, what are those are against the uh, normal hydrogen, standard hydrogen? Yeah. So I have to pass them to the calm electrode. I think it's just by subtracting the, the potential, right? Right, these are, yeah. And, and that's, that's the right? these, these are all versus normal hydrogen electrodes, I guess. That's what I wrote down, is that right? Yeah. Well, just like I mentioned today, um, we can convert from one reference potential to the other simply by um, uh, subtracting off the calomel electrode potential. Uh, so, for example, the copper potential is 0.34 volts. The SCE potential is about 0.24 volts. So the difference between is 0.34 between the NHE, zero point, but it's only about 0.1 volt versus the, um, between the, for the SCE potential, okay? So here's our curve, and we, again, so the difference between these two potentials is only about a tenth of a volt, so. 
There is another possibility for the sulfate ions to be to be oxidized to pair sulfate. Mm -hmm. This one might be the one you, you don't take this into consideration because of the size of the iron. What's the potential for that? This one is uh, two point two six volt versus from the hydrogen. Yeah, well that's point plus two two volts and so yeah, you could continue to write possibilities and so but that's not gonna happen because the first reaction would be the platinum or oxygen, not the sulfate oxidation. So so changing like I said, changing to different reference potentials, it, you're saying subtract, that's a that works, but you know, you can always write half cells and figure out exactly how to do that. So any other one? Yes, sir. Well, this would be that. This would be appropriate for the uncompensated resistance or the resist solution resistance. Either way, is the it, it's it's for a particular type of uh, calculation where you would have two parallel plates separated by a particular distance. Let's call it x, and then each plate would have a given area, and that would be a simple. And that would assuming basically there's a just a cylinder of solution between those two plates and uh, no uh, current would be outside that cylinder. And yeah, you can use that particular equation. That should give you the right answer. So uh, there is always assumed that the two plates or the two mm -hmm. electrodes have the same energy? In this case, we have to assume, for this particular equation to be correct, we'd have to assume those plates have the same area, right? Because I was thinking of, of if I had to multiply the area by two because I have no. One, no. One, no. No. It, could you it, really what you're thinking about is not the area of the plates total, but just the area that the current flows through. So you're thinking about a tube essentially here. Okay. So the current flows through that given tube of the, the solution. When then we're, then they're talking about repeat the calculation. Well, putting it at a different distance apart. Now, what you what they've essentially assumed or make the assumption is that since the uh, the resistance along that tube is probably going to be a linear function of the distance. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, you can think about it as a physical resistor a, across that, and anywhere you put the thing along that, it'll just be like a a, a variable resistor, if you will, and you can adjust it to different points. There is a different <coughs> calculation for a spherical electrode. But the one thing you were saying, in parts B and C, it is assumed that a very large counter electrode is deployed. Right. In A, the because of the geometry, we we're assuming two parallel plates together. Uh, in B and C, it's often the case that we don't have a situation, especially in electrochemistry like this. Now, conductivity measurements where you're measuring the conduct conductance of a solution, this would be exactly the situation. But in electrochemical experiments where you're trying to do an experiment, uh, that's often not the case. Uh, usually you have a very small electrode compared to a much distant, much larger distance away uh, uh, counter electrode, perhaps a, a coil of wire or a, a screen of some sort. The calculations for the, the 
the equations for the uh, compensated resistance in the, in the spherical electrode case are assuming that particular geometry that you've got essentially a spherical electrode that is surrounded at some infinite distance by a spherical counter electrode. Okay, in other words, you've got an electrode and then completely surrounding it, you've got at some infinite distance away, full of solution between those two points, a another electrode, okay? So in practice, we don't, that's often, that's the theory, but in practice it turns out that it doesn't necessarily have to be infinitely large or infinitely far away to approach it very closely that particular case. And so as long as it's sufficiently far away and sufficiently big, it doesn't matter whether it's infinitely large or infinitely far away. The derivation that you've got in the book is assuming that you have infinitely large, infinitely far away counter electrode. But um, so then you use, use a different uh, form of that equation uh, for pi um, kappa R0 and then um, x plus R0. Now in this case, what happens if um, x is uh, infinite? So. This part of the equation goes to 1, correct? So the derivation assumes that you can have at various distance here, but if x is very large, this goes to 1. So that's basically solve that. Um, I guess it doesn't. I, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't. That's not exactly what the equation question is asking. It, it, you do. You can put in different values of x to get different values of the resistance. Um, uh, the reason they're saying very large counter electrode is because that's the derivation, is assuming a large counter electrode. <clears throat> well, we're basically out of time, so why don't we stop here? Uh, we didn't get to the the uh, paper, so we'll just leave that paper for next time. We'll discuss the paper next time.